Here now. Yay, Saturday. Yay, game design. We, uh, we don't have a huge number yet. So, how's your guys Saturday? How's everyone doing today? I'm going well. I've got some friends visiting from, uh, well, a friend and a dog visiting from out of town. <laughs> it's going to be great. That's friends. Go That's friends. Them this evening. You know, the human counts as a friend, too. That's friends. Fair enough. That is, that is very fair. <laughs> Wee! Good to see your face, Pseudo. Yeah, so my good news for the day is I got a Pseudo cam to put in. Yeah. I'm no longer just a still smiley face. I have motion. Now he's a motion smiley face. He's a real boy. How about all of you guys? Oh. Does anybody else have good news to add to the beginning of the stream? It's always best, always best, kick off a stream with good news. Always. You know what I can't figure out? It's why Deus didn't have his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Here comes the glasses. Now we have visual acuity. Only sometimes you need to see. I almost forgot mine too. I grabbed them like last minute. Now I can see! I can fight! I can actually see without them fairly well. I don't even need glasses to drive legally. I just like wearing them. No. They, they give me headaches if I don't wear them. Why well, have them? Those weak eye muscles. Stats, ideas, defining the model. That's kind of where we left off, is the model. We got like a five stat model. We have questions on a couple of them. We'll have to come back and readdress. Uh, Whoa. Well, I, I feel like we can we can look at this while more people slide in. So, let, yeah, let's work on our model because I'm not happy with the stat model yet. Yeah, and then once we have the stat model, then we can start leaning a bit into combat, and that'll sort of describe itemization, and then we can start working on taxonomy as we go. Yeah, totally. So I really like uh, using ferocity as like our strength stat. I agree. I think that's thematically congruent and works out well. Okay, I'm just going to add a final model. Ferocity. Stamina. Definitely stamina. Intelligence? Oh wait, uh, there's a. We were we were not sure about instinct and intelligence because yeah, that's why there's questions. Is... There, I missed reflex agility above it though. I'm gonna go with agility. Unless sure. anyone has a, a, a separate input on the reflex agility. Three, two, one, done. Um. I'm still, I, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, now we're, How now we we're to the deal instinct with, like, intelligence. Because there's, there's got to be creation of items. We want that to be mostly controlled by the player base. Yep, yep. And that will come more... Okay, so let's just go... We want at least two more, I'd imagine. I'm going to put blank blank. And let's figure out itemization and how that's going to work. And once we figure out how itemization is going to work, then we can figure out creation, and then we can relook at the creation stats in order to make all three work together. Fair enough. So I believe what we were leaning more towards uh, was a combat system where you would have a basic attack, you do attacky sort of things, and then you would have items for things that are not attacks. For Dimash. 
Dimarge. Items for non Dimarge. What a soda. So like that would uh, that would envelop like healing items, yep. you know, items that would allow you to like snare your opponent and slow them, stuff like that. Uh, uh, attacks could also have uh, status effects too, though. Yes, I'm not saying that it's not like you can't have it attached to an attack, mm -hmm. but if you wanted something that's going to be like consistently going to slow the enemy, I feel like that would be more an item than an attack. An attack Net. would probably have a chance to do it. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. You know, there there are some animals that craft purely out of instinct to an extent. Yeah, like uh, like termites, for instance. You get the the termite mounds built out of instinct, and that's you know kind of a form of armor. If yep. you will. Yep. Or I was actually thinking uh, spiders. They, they make webs. Yeah. Nets. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. There's actually a really, really cool spider in the Amazon. One of my favorites. I, I, I went and studied spiders for a while. I had to learn about this. A bit more light. So you can see me. All right. So it actually has four long legs and four short legs. Its outside legs are long and its inside legs are short. And it uses the inside legs to hold a branch and stabilize itself on the branch. And it uses the long legs to feed its silk onto the legs and uses its long legs essentially to knit. And it literally knits a, a net out of its own silk so that it can hold the net with the four long legs and curls up and waits for bugs to fly by. And as they fly by, it shoots its legs down and opens the net up and grabs them out of the air with its net while they're flying by. That is kind of ridiculously cool. <laughs> Can you imagine that at, like, giant spider level, though? It'd be terrifying. Yep. Just, like, snagging cars or planes as they fly by. Yeah, yeah, one big enough to just grab planes and just... Woof. Yeah, that'd be terrifying. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool attacks. EDF. Um, yeah, just, just... Yeah, 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 totally EDF. Uh, one of the... Other uh, creatures that has come to my mind a few different times while I've been thinking about this game as an example of a cool kind of attack we could use is a, uh, a sonic shrimp. Oh, so, yeah. You know what I'm talking Those about? Are the, the punching ones, right? Yeah. So, just... yeah. so what they actually, how they actually do it is really cool. They have springs built in inside of their claws, and they have a system to retract it in, and that loads the springs, and they can actually lock it. And then all they do is unlock it and the spring releases, and that's how it gets that really fast motion outwards to create those sonic blasts. Which is super cool. Yeah, it, it moves is wild. It, it moves so fast when it creates that motion that it creates so much heat that it instantly flash fries all the water in the area and creates a pressure wave from the water collapsing. It just crushes anything. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Nature's Nature is amazing. Metal. <laughs> um so attacks so here's a question like um for our non-predators the preys not for all of their herders. attacks yeah that's still prey not all of the attacks are going to necessarily be damage like there's a lot of yeah. animals that don't attack to deal damage they might deal some damage like you know a hoof kick to cause a stun and deal some damage but essentially like you know for combat here the goal of combat is typically there's there's two forms of combat we're gonna have right we've got predator chasing prey and we've got predator fighting predator yeah right, so and we've also got like potentially our herd animals chipping in to fight against the big bad sort of deal oh well even the predators will fight the big bad i'm sure they'll take yeah. a chunk out of it and they'll they'll probably be one of the key ones for taking damage off of it but i would like the the herd ones to be able to have an effect on it so right off the top of my head the herd ones could have more of a debuff effect on the boss weakening yes. it to allow the predators to fight it easier like things that are charging or uh, like body slamming, like I, I don't know, uh, a horse doing a big kick, maybe break some armor off of it. 
yep. cause the predators to deal a little bit more damage at that point. Uh, you, you definitely need to get some more sleep board after the Big hockey agree. game. You gotta be awake to watch my knucks kick your Bruins ass. <laughs> so we're gonna call Sweet. them uh, prey and predator attacks. Okay. Sure. And just this is just brainstorming here, but we we do need to have different sort of combat styles yet work together because the prey attacks are going to be primarily around avoidance yeah so, so knock armor off stun, slow armory, stun. reduction slow do we want a block type mechanic similar to slay the spire and games like that Ooh, that's an idea. I don't know how we would implement that for like a a large group. Well, it's more the one on ones. Like whenever there's combat, right for for really one on one the for one on one combat. I think will be fine. But like when it's a large group versus one of the the raid whatever's like would that also be done one on one and then just your your contribution goes towards the raid that, that's or... how i imagined it mm. i had been imagining it more like we'd keep a roster of the people that are in the raid and then like just randomly assign a target for the boss's attacks yeah i, I saw it more as a uh... A very simple, classic, idle type where you come in, do your damage, your damage is taken off the total hit points, and the whole group of people together have to do a total of damage equal to its total hit points, working together that way. We can definitely go more in-depth into your style of system when we do a later version, like when we do like the dungeon system we had been talking about, that would bring in the mechanics required to do that at that yeah. point. Yeah, that would... I agree. I think that's a good idea. Save that for like a combat 2.0 thing when we bring in dungeons or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you board would rather have just regular armor with potential bonuses. So like a, say a turtle would have a standard armor value that would reduce incoming damage. Uh, and then you could like Pull your legs in. Oops. Pull your legs in to uh, get more armor for a turn sort of thing. That's essentially what we just talked about, though. Well, as They're opposed mechanically to... the same. You're using an attack to increase you're... your armor for a turn. That's, that's adding damage reduction for a right. turn, which is block system from Slay. But you already have a passive damage reduction if you are an armored creature. Yeah, I never said you can't. I'm only I thinking think of a... our actives right now. I'm strictly in this little active bubble, thinking, do we want an active system to increase damage reduction? Which exactly I was thinking, like a turtle crawling into its shell, a pill bug rolling up, which is one of the ones they actually use in Slay as well, interestingly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think having an active ability to increase your your damage reduction could be cool. I like that it gives you another option for something to do in a turn. Predator attacks are going to be, again, stuns, slash holds. That's Should very... we maybe refer to these as abilities rather than attacks at this point, then? I'm okay uh, with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fine taxonomy change. Because this is, you know, basically an item level skill now that we're applying to a creature. Yeah, it's just that they would be infinite as opposed to finite use. based on the number that you have. And it would be limited to you being that creature type rather than you just having those items. 
Yeah. So, like, you, in theory, could have a, you know, all-damage predator that has some items that give them defense and do things that way, as opposed to having a passive damage reduction increase based on your your animal type. Yeah, exactly. Should predators have, like, bleed kind of effects? Yeah. So yep. they can cause, like, damage over time? I was actually just thinking dots as you said that. More dots, more dots, more dots. More dots, more dots. Many whelps, west side! Because you've got, uh, you've got, like, the venomous predators. Uh, you've got, well, heck, even poisonous prey that we could work in. Uh, where on taking damage, you reflect damage. Um, you've got... Or if anything kills you, they bleed. get a, a negative effect for a while. Yeah. Make it, you know, it's the the classic system defense in nature of don't eat me because you're going to have a bad time if you do. Yeah. I think from a game mechanic standpoint, it would be more fun if it worked like thorns. Some of them. I'm thinking if we were to do it the way of if you attack and eat this person, you're going to have some negative effects. There would also need to be a system for the predators and the prey where they need to perform some sort of task or act that involves getting nourishment for themselves on some regular basis so that at some point you might be there and it's, you know, there's other things you could potentially tackle, but this is the only one you could easily tackle, but it's not going to be pleasant. I see that as a down the road. Yeah. I like I'm it. Just brainstorming. I think it's a down the road thing. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot of implementation and work, I know. But uh that that's my reasoning for still my reasoning down the road future potentials for having you know, killed this person, you get this effect. Yeah. And then we could work that into like a hunting system as well, where, you know, you're a predator, you need to eat, you need to go hunt and do some small combats to get your food. Exactly. But you might get unlucky, they might be poisonous, and then you need to either have an item to deal with that or perform a task to deal with that. Or you've just got to suffer through it for the next 24 hours. Yeah. Minus 25% to your attack for the next 24 hours or something like that. <laughs> Minus to your constitution or agility for a while. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, stuns and holds and dots, and definitely just raw damage, obviously. Uh, are there many predators buffs. that have, like, armor break effects? I, w I was thinking buffs would probably be more prey side. Uh, they're definitely predator side as well, as well as debuffs. Maybe, like, prey would be more of a kind of a supporter, support kind of role. Uh, That's what I was. But that would be more again combat 2.0, bringing in the support because that's going to be multiple units in combat to justify support. Yeah. So maybe have so, some support animals being worked out and, and thought of, but we won't introduce those animal archetypes until we know combat. I just I. Every time we talk about support and item usage, my brain immediately goes to like an octopus just whipping grenades with all of its tentacles. <laughs> I actually see I potions that. usually more than grenades, the, you know, throwing to, to heal. But yeah, yeah, I'm down with all. Oh. Right arm heal, left arm damage. Right or left side, I should heal, say. Left forearms damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's make three arms and three arms so he has two arms left to smack people with. <laughs> you know you want to octopus bitch slap someone. Yeah, do. <laughs> uh, the buffs I was thinking is like you know the roars and the growls and stuff like that to raise your own attack. They could also simultaneously be looked at as a debuff. Lower their defense. Lower their. No, I mean let's let's take a little bit a uh, little bit of inspiration from Pokemon here. Uh, growl reduces the enemy's attack. It intimidates them. It brings it's them... One back. of the things I was about to say. 
Though I didn't know it from Pokemon, I just know games. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> I know Vigi game. It's 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 using using the uh, mechanical system to explain a real life event. It, it does make sense. I don't mind having the pretzel on, but it kind of spamming the chat. Yeah. I'll if people want to jump into chat, they can. Uh... They should feel free to. Yeah, we want your ideas. Everybody that's lurking and listening, if you think this is an interesting project, by all means, take part. This isn't us designing a game. This is us helping you guys design the game. We really, really want to include you in this. So please, please, please throw your ideas at us while we're doing this. We're, we're doing these brainstorming bits to get your juices flowing so that we can get the ideas flowing in your head so that we can get those ideas coming out and back onto paper. Ward's excused because he's only had three hours sleep, and it's hard to be creative when you haven't slept. True fact. Hard to do anything when you haven't slept. Even sleep. That's the worst part about it. Yup. Um, buffs, debuffs, stuns, holds. Um, that probably breaks down most of it. So how does a prey win? If a, if a predator attacks a prey, how does the prey win? Maybe escape or like some sort of like turn mm -hmm. limit. Yeah, escape is definitely the, what I was thinking, but we don't want it to just be like a you know FF run. Yeah, I I like the idea of a turn limit. I like the idea like of that. a turn limit because um, it's you know it keeps your combat snappy. You've only got you know ten rounds or whatever. How about the turn limit is based on the predator? Mm, so like a faster predator would have more turns and a slower predator would have less but deal more damage basically yeah yeah I can see that it makes more of a rogue situation where that rogue is going to get to hit you lots of times like a cheetah you know it's going to be on your ass it's going to hit you a few amount of times it's not going to do as much damage per hit but it's going to be right fucking there whereas the lion yeah. won't get as long on you but it's going to do the damage while it's on top of you and we can also have like the prey have like a modifier for that as well. So something like a bunny could be able to escape a lot quicker than you know. I like this something... idea. I like this idea. I yeah. Like this idea. And I like it just being like a flat number. Like the prey has a minus three turn modifier and the predator has a plus one turn modifier, so you end up with eight turns instead of ten. Oh, you want like a ten base? I was thinking the predator has the base and then the prey modifies it. I like them both having a play in it, because if you're a very fast predator against a very slow... Well, they do both have a play in it this way. The predator sets the how long it's going to be on top of you. I think that's the same thing. And, and, and then the prey the modifies. Thing, basically. Yeah. It's just an extra number to calculate if you have a base, and then they both modify it, rather than the predator brings in the base, and then the prey that he's chasing modifies how long he gets to chase it for. We still do need a... A, like, normal, though. Baseline. Yeah. So just an agreed-upon design norm is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with this. I agree. We need to understand how long we want combat to take on average because the, the prey that's going to reduce the turns you have to catch it is also probably going to reduce its hit points fairly significantly. Yeah. The faster ones are generally smaller, thus having low HP. Yeah, so you're going to have to build really strong for your agility, jacking up your dodge as much as you can, and then giving them as few turns to hit you as possible. That would be the build pattern for a, a rabbit. They don't even have a ton of stamina. Maybe a bit of stamina. Not a lot of ferocity like medium, to a rabbit. Medium stamina. You know what? Ooh, they should have really, really low stamina if, it, if that's hit points. We want stamina and endurance. Hmm, that's a good point. I think we probably need to because we need to separate turn life from actual like health life. So then we're going to make stamina constitution. It's health. And then stamina is stamina. And I was thinking endurance. Make it more clear for people. 
Yeah, the endurance is a bit more clear. Endurance is your, you know, long distance ability. Ability really. to run a lot. Yeah. <laughs> How long can you run? That's literally what it means. How long can you go for? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice separation between the two defensive... Well, two major defensive things, because yeah. agility can be used both ways. Yeah, yeah, agility is definitely offensive and defensive. It's the two-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely, definitely helps. And all you watching and following along, you can see how we had to leave this. Like, it's something we needed to decide, to de define, but we couldn't finish it. So instead of beating our heads on a wall, we figured out what we could, got it as close as we could, and moved on to the next bit where we can start figuring out exactly how this is going to play out, start thinking about it. Once we got to the point of abilities, we're thinking actual combat, we're, we're doing combat in our heads back and forth, and then all of a sudden we're seeing these holes like, oh, we want to be able to account for this. So now we've got to go back to stats. Now that we've been able to get to the point where, oh, we've realized our hole in stats, we've got a much cleaner little refined system going on here now. I'm happy. I'm happy. Modify so predator thinking, turns. I'm, I'm thinking turns about... I'm thinking about the difference between intellect and instinct again. And... I feel like instinct could be used for like the creation of things like that we were talking about, like spider webs, termite mounds, uh, pill bugs being able to armor up. Um, I see but those intellect... as just being base abilities that those things have. I don't but think how would we how would we anything. modify them? We, the instinct stat would modify them. Because otherwise your abilities would never get any better. They could be based off, like, constitution and stuff like that. Do the d20 system where each skill has its own base stat that it's associated with? Yeah, and that affects how well you can defend uh, I'm not sure about that. Then when you become an animal type, certain skills will have certain stats, increasing the value of those stats with that class to make it so that, you know, a rabbit is much better to stack agility, and stacking agility will increase its stuff more than... It does make sense. There can be some skills that are instinct-based at that point, and that can be how you introduce instinct. Just not everything in Because, you know, bite doesn't scale off of instinct. Bite scales off of ferocity. Yeah. How ferocious is your bite is really what they want to know when you bite them. Not how much instinct do you have. So actually actually modeling that on a on a character model would be a list of skills mapped to the stat that they're affected by and then a scaling rating uh, for that stat. Yeah, or just adding a plus one for each stat point. Even something super yeah, simple like that. It's all about how we balance it towards the end. We don't have a really yeah. complicated scaling system. Yeah, whatever the scaling system ends up being. Yeah. It's some sort of scaling system. Yeah. Just wanted to be clear for everybody. We don't have to go all complicated here. The scaling system can just be add one every time the stack goes up. That's scaling. Um, okay, okay, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon. I'm on it. I'm gonna throw that under ideas because I don't really have anywhere to put it yet. Gonna get rid of this so we don't get confused by it. random ideas uh stats or abilities are associated to a stat and scale off of it abilities 
Abolitis. Abolitis. That sounds horrible. <laughs> oh, I've come down with a case of abolitis. Oh. It sounds like something that would be in your throat, too. We've made Pookie laugh so hard she had to stop painting. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of diverse builds being able to come out of this. Speed builds, strength builds, endurance builds. I want to dodge and run. I wa I'm, I'm going to just hit them once and knock them out. I'm going to be on top of them forever. It doesn't matter how much damage I do. They can't escape. They're all viable strategies. But then we come back to how we're going to handle itemization. Because <laughs> I really do like the idea of having um, a, the ability to like heal off of an item or have some 100% uh, success rate effect come off of an item. I'm drawing the line. Nothing else gets done until we're done what's below this line. Itemization. Crafting. Go away. Yeah, I like full screen. Full screen works good. Itemization. Crafting. So Stink for and intelligence. These three things need to be figured out before we do anything else. And if you didn't notice, yes, I'm standing. So swanky. I love it. Uh, so for itemization, what do we want to have? Do we want to have people able to equip things? I think this might be more consumables we're thinking of for itemization. But maybe we should also think of like what categories of items we want to have for like, you know, like offensive items, you know, defensive items, and then maybe like healing or other types of okay so let's do some quick taxonomy healing damaging uh offensive and defensive effects do we want to split those buffs debuffs or just like i guess just status effects i mean this is just different things that we're gonna have right now this isn't final taxonomy right we just need to define what, what we want to do with our items. Uh, I absolutely do want equipment. Okay, how are we going to deal with equipment? That is what I knew was going to come. I feel like it... you can't change equipment mid-fight. I feel like that's something that has to be you know picked out. Oh yeah, totally. Kind of what, once the fight starts, you have no control over it. The whole thing just AIs itself out. You just say, I'm attacking this, and you get the result, unless you paid the bits to see it on screen, and then like the sprites will pop up, and you'll watch them kind of chase each other across the screen. How many turns it takes can be how fast they move across the screen, see if they get each other. It's a fun little way to scale it, and make the fast ones actually seem fast, and the slow ones seem slow, and the long fight's long, and the slow fight's slow. That'd be cool. I like this idea. But how do we do equipment? How do we justify equipment? That is my question. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, and I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of, okay, we want equipment. How do we make this work? Because I like the idea of having equipment. Absolutely. My favorite part of a game is gathering the equipment and figuring out what to use, where, when, why, in order to optimize my stats and prepare myself for battle. I love that. It has to be included. So we've got aliens attacking. We've got DNA. We've got genetics being modified. So we've got biotech. Are we opposed to cybertech? Depends what's making the cyber tech and like how the it's aliens. like acquired. I think I am. I think I am opposed to cyber tech purely on the grounds that you would be able to like the the biotech that you have, you could equip a certain DNA strain, whatever, mm -hmm. and that would be like your your shoulder slot, for instance, and give you 
uh, some additional ferocity to power your ferocity powered attacks. So you're talking it's, you know, about bulking quick, up your forearms. You're talking about quick interchangeable DNA. Yeah. And rather than a permanent Perm DNA. So then what we can do, actually, I kind of like this idea because then I see the tags as being a hybrid of two things. You have your applied tags. Oh, no, wait, we said you have to get the tag in order to become the creature. Never mind. They're all applied. Yeah. But I do like thinking of it as like an equipment slot that you can have like more, more ferocity in your shoulders or then maybe swap that up or something that's a bit more like agility biased, like something that kind of makes you faster. Yep. So DNA slots, we could do legs, claws, teeth, mouth. I'm not doing all of them. I'm just throwing ideas out. Go ahead, guys. Throw ideas out for where you think stuff should be. I um, will definitely need a, a, a main body one, like hide. for increasing size or like hide thickness, what have you. Uh, hide is good for that, but yeah, general raw. I think general raw size is just jacking Could just be skele your... like skeleton. Skeleton? It's kind of a full body thing. Like a reinforced skeleton, which is heavier and slower, or um, like a I'm gonna say skeleton that's a bit faster. No to skeleton. Just because it's difficult, because not everything has a skeleton. So not everything has that slot. So you want variable equipment slots, so certain things can equip things that other things can't? Like the... Yeah, I'm okay not? with this idea. I'm okay with this idea. Yeah. Well, as I, as I not... say it and think about it, it makes more sense, because that does allow for stuff like claws and teeth and stuff that maybe not absolutely everything has, but you'd still want to be able to modify. I want a bird with fangs. <laughs> there are birds with fangs. There are birds with fangs. I'm sure I need to are. see this. They're, they're not huge fangs, but they do have little serrated teeth in there, some of them. The only stuff that comes up for me is Photoshop, and the first one's a goose. <sighs> teeth. A goose with teeth would be terrible. For anybody but that not, doesn't know, not geese like, are the not biggest like... assholes of all birds. There's a, all birds are assholes, and there's a lot of seriously asshole birds out there. But geese are the worst. But I, I see. I'm thinking not like predator teeth, like human teeth, like a goose with dentures. <laughs> Buck tooth goose. <laughs> I think we need to make a game out of this. <laughs> Buck tooth goose game. I like the it's idea of having just a, a rip off varying... of goose game, but the t the goose has teeth and you can like bite people in the ass. I l I like the idea of having variable equipment slots, DNA slots if you will, um based on the type of animal that you are. It is a bit more work on our end to get it to work nicely, but I mean, I think it'll really make the game feel more like a game and less like it just an auto clicker. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. The more I think about it, the more I like it. It becomes a major, major part of your decision making when deciding what animal archetype you want to become for your build. That's going to determine which DNA slots are available you for, available to you for modification, which creates... Yeah. It's not super complicated. We're not making things difficult. You're not having to build your own slots. It's just one extra little tiny consideration when you're looking at what you want to become, but it adds great amounts of variability to the game and also makes you really feel more like that animal sound more like that animal and like you've got a, say an octopus which has eight leg slots but like you couldn't put say teeth on your legs yeah you can do that <laughs> so the the octopus does have a pretty mean beak yes which is teeth i think still Oh, I, I see. That's my my thought about like the difference between teeth and mouth, and I think it should just be a mouth slot. Yeah, probably just mouth. Okay. Um, Legs, claws, mouth, hide, skeleton, uh, skeleton, and exoskeleton. I will group in together. So if you're an insect, you still have a skeleton slot. Yeah, and if you're an invertebrate, you don't have a skeleton slot. Yeah, you just can't have it. The octopus does not get one. arms mm. well legs. i was thinking about i was thinking about how to represent that and i think like, most what animals would the only have legs but some do have arms what would the difference between an arm and a leg slot be 
probably just like arms are more for uh, grappling, dexterous. interacting, tensile, usability stuff, and legs are more for movement. But keep coming back to the octopus because it's a really weird design consideration. Uh, what like an octopus's legs? I say those are, are extremely arms. dexterous, or no, would those, those are all those be are arms. arms? It has eight arms, no legs. Yeah, I think legs are just mostly for like mobility. Yeah, and it doesn't move by its legs. Those aren't legs. Those are arms that it uses to grapple and manipulate and articulate. Its movement cool. is actually a water jet. Cool. I like it. Okay. Arms, legs, claws, mouth, hide, skeleton. I mean, six is slots is actually a good number. I'm sure lots will come up eventually as we actually start trying to flush this out yeah, as and start going through some new breeds and stuff. But I think at a baseline, it's probably fine. Yeah. Okay, so, so equipment will be So we, we figured deep. out equipment. <laughs> so then crafting then becomes going to the alien machine that's been recovered or crashed or found or whatever that they use to make DNA. Getting the DNA from the combats and creating your own stuff for those DNA slots. Or defeating a special boss and getting special DNA that you can then sell. Or just immediately slot in. Like, yeah. I do like the idea of being able to get loot from a combat that you can then just use. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to go to another member of the community, but you can if you want, and it'll probably be better. Yeah. Um... Well, the way I see it is the the big special bosses that happen once in a while, they drop loot that you can just use. The normal combat that your your day to day grind against other players, that gives you the crafting stuff. So you can't just you know go hunting players and get new items from it, but you will get stuff that you can then use on new items. So your itemization won't be bursty ever. You won't ever just luck out and get the stuff you want at the beginning, but you'll always be working towards the stuff you want playing the norm. Whereas so I sorry to cut you off, but no I just problem. had a little brain picture. Um, when gathering material. I think gathering like maybe three subtypes of DNA would be cool because you, then you've got like, you know, this is a, you know, predator style DNA. This is a mixed style DNA. This is a herbivore style DNA. And you can combine those in different ways to get different stat boots based on the slot that it goes into. Okay, well, so I, like, I, I want more complicated taxonomy than that, even for it. Yes, on the I'm not... System not meant to be final in any sort of way but i just i want to have like a spread of materials that you can get so i'm absolutely non, with you i want a non wide one variety. number of dna it also gives incentive to attack other predators rather than just always hunting prey yeah we could even which, have like an rna which well. reminds me we should probably discuss predator versus predator combat at some point because i'm sure it'll be different from predator versus prey Would we just do the first thing that comes to my mind is how would we handle turn order and it would it just be like the mean of the two base turns? You mean the turn amount? Yeah. Yeah. Turn order, turn order turn order that's so like, gonna be just normal like, initiative. Yeah, like agility could just like a effect initiative. So if you have higher agility, chances are gonna be the one who will strike first. Um I think uh, initiative is going to be a, a hybrid step, quite a hybrid step. So it's going to take into account your intelligence as well as your agility, maybe some other stuff. Did we, did we agree on it? Uh, intelligence yet? Our final model doesn't have intelligence yet. It doesn't yet, but we definitely want intelligence of some kind in order to guide the uh, crafting system. And that's why we're working on the crafting system right now, so we can figure out how we want the statting to apply to crafting. So we need types of DNA, and maybe even a currency, raw currency to used as the one to combine the, the materials together, which I was thinking maybe like RNA. You have to spend RNA to create your DNA. 
I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it makes sense. Throw a little bit of science into it. <sighs> um, do you want to break it down by slot type? Arm DNA, leg sure. DNA, claw DNA? Um, hmm. I, I guess it makes sense, but we may want to just even like abstract it a little higher than that. I'm, so you're not just building for a certain slot, but building for maybe like a few or a thing that'll affect a couple slots. Yeah, so it's I, not really I honestly tough. didn't like that idea. I was hoping you guys would disagree with it and give me a better idea. I still like the idea of having like purposeful DNA. Like, it came from a prey, so it's better at making prey-type things. But you will still probably need a, a bit of it to make a predator mm -hmm. piece. We could just model the DNA after the stat model. So, uh, maybe not oh, one-to-one. On. One. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have ideas. I have ideas. The DNA is actually broken down into three chemical components. Oh, hey, Ankaria. Hey, Ankaria, you. welcome. I'm glad you're playing Wolset as well. We finished Act 3 last night and started the endgame farming, and it is great. You will enjoy it when you Very get there. Much enjoyed. It definitely has its, its share of bugs, but as a studio's first game, totally acceptable, and I've been enjoying the heck out of it. Act 2 is where it starts to get interesting. That Act 2 boss was legit. Yeah. DNA has three types of chemical component. Phosphate, a sugar called... Eozyribose. Bases adenine, guanine, cysteine, thymine... When it's read out, it's... There we go. Associated with A, T, G. The association of A with T, T with C is through hydrogen bond. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. A, T, G, and C. So A, T, G, and C uh, would be, like, relating to different parts of our stat model? We can just arbitrarily assign them because we're not geneticists. In a bunch of bugs, but having fun feels less overwhelming than Path of Exile. Listening on you guys trying to figure out what you are talking about. DNA and stuff. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're working on the crafting system for the bot game area. And we're figuring they're all animals. So the crafting has to be genetic of some kind. And there are aliens in this story that have come in and are modifying the animals. So we're saying the animals that you guys will be playing can use the same system they're using to modify your own bodies. And we're trying to figure out what the components of the crafting system will be. So we're digging into what the components of DNA are in order to figure out how we want to do this. Because really, like, you know, the, the DNA of a predator is really no different than the DNA of a prey if you move the AT and GCs around. It just becomes something completely different. Just raw building block at that point. Yeah. So we could even just have there be those. Maybe. Or maybe even and then just need so, very so maybe numbers AT, G, and C will have They'll all be their own individual currencies that you spend that's, well. That's a great idea, Ankaria. Thank you so much. This is, oh, and it's not yeah. us designing this game. Just for the record, we we are brainstorming to get the viewers started, and I'm glad we've got you throwing some ideas in there because that is fantastic. That's a beautiful way to handle the DNA. So basically, what you're saying is the AT and GC can make like base pieces, but those base pieces then need to be combined together to make the higher tier stuff or more advanced, yeah, like more that. usable. That could be stuff that like the raid bosses drop. 
drop it like a mutagen kind of level stuff. Yeah, they could drop higher end mutagens for crafting, but we also want them to drop just straight usable stuff because it's a wonderful feeling in a game to just get a new item and, and it drops and you can use it. And you're like, yes, this is amazing. I agree. Uh, I like the idea of these multiple, like, tiered currencies for crafting. I think DNA as gems that are chipped transmute to better DNA or with already better DNA since DNA are unique sometimes. Yep. You can have, like, damaged DNA or not, like, like quality of the instruction, right? You're just protein instructions. <laughs> And I also kind of like it as like, so for the uh, like, ex uh, better gear should be exponentially harder to get. Do we agree on this? Yes. Okay. So with the mutagen theory, to create a tier two item, we need two of the base tier one items to create a tier two mutagen. However, to create a tier three mutagen, we need to get enough items to create two tier two mutagens and put the two tier twos together to create a tier three. If we want to create a tier four, we have to do all the tier ones to make a bunch of tier twos and put all the tier twos together to make two tier threes and put two tier threes together to make a tier four. Follow? Yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just I'm thinking of that from a usability perspective. And I really like the system, but I feel like we should have some way to say if you want to make like a tier three mutagen, then you just have to have this much of the base currencies and you can just make it. Yep. Yeah. It would just streamline the, the crafting for you. But if you want to craft very specific tier three mutagens together, then you'd have to go and create those two specific tier three mutagens and put them together. Yeah. Uh, some DNA could be very bad, so possibly open up a gamble, too, if that's needed. So like they, they, they could have multiple potential effects, basically, so you're not 100% guaranteed in your craft with what you're going to come out in. You have the skill to combine these things together, but not necessarily the ability to guarantee what you're going to get out of it. Almost like creating a child with a huge mix of DNA, you're going to get some pieces, but not all of them. So the best you can do is assemble a good brew and, and hope you get the right numbers out of it. And the, uh, the then your crafting skill, which we're thinking is going to be intellect, would be higher and give you a better chance of creating the thing you want. Or like maybe even have higher stats on it. Yeah, yeah. Have maybe even have checkpoints and or we were talking about having specific crafting classes like the apes. So then they could introduce passives to guarantee or limit or or have some extra flexible control over what final pieces of the mutagens are used in the combination. Yeah. I, I like this because it's starting to bring in really what we wanted for the crafting side of things with certain species being far more capable in the crafting side while still crafting being open and available to everyone yeah yeah i think that I like works it. i think that works and, and you would hit like tiers of your ability to craft and be able to craft higher tier mutagens as you yep. hit those higher tiers I like, like that. Higher tier mutagens require intelligence checkpoints kind of idea. Yes. Take the question mark off then. Pseudo, you, you good with all this? Makes sense. Hmm. So now we have solidified our need for an intelligence stat. And since we have an intelligence stat, do we want to include something like a uh, an instinct stat? I do love the I don't, idea. Of I like the idea stat. of it. I don't think we need it. I think it's replaced by equipment at this point. Yeah. Well, if we I, just think about it for a second, 
I just, I just want to brainstorm on it a little bit more. I don't want to write it off yet because I really, really like the idea. I don't think it needs to be complicated. I don't think it needs to be super valuable, but I love the flavor of it. And we think of abilities that would scale off of it. Which could be either good, great, bad, or cursed, super bad. If good, you get something nice. You're talking about the, uh, yeah, I've, um, yeah, right. I, I read that while we were brainstorming. I had to finish the thought I was on. Uh, I do like the idea. I was actually even thinking of unidentified DNA in certain situations yep. from, from what you had going on with the brewing and the random effects. And, or even intelligence could also unlock your ability to see what the effects of the mutagen are be able to identify the mutagens that you're working with yeah so the higher intelligence the more you can see about the information of that i like it yeah it makes intelligence quite valuable as it should be yeah we'll we're gonna have to play around with scaling quite a bit oh yeah yeah, yeah. There's, we're gonna need to work with balance a ton with all these different systems it's gonna be broken as shit in version one <laughs> They always are. <laughs> they always are. Every game is broken when you first make it. Yep, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, so we've got equipment slots, we've got crafting, we've got equipment that you can craft. We've got it all flavored into the animal world. Which is amazing. <laughs> did, sorry, just to, just to jump in on it. Do we want to have like actual levels? Like yes. level one, level two? Yes. Maybe that's where instinct could play into. Because instinct kind of affects all stats. So Oops. maybe your instinct is your actual like character level. So if your instinct level two, instinct three, instinct four is like you're a very upgraded version of that, of that creature. And then you need to hit instinct a number to be able to go to your next one and you reset every time on your class? It, or it, it just, what do you think it, it affects like all of the, um, like instinct would be the thing that kind of affects all the other stats, like that's your level. So like, you know, when you level up in most RPGs, all your stats kind of, or a bunch of your stats kind of increase as well. So maybe that's where instinct comes in. It's like your actual like character level. Instinct is, for, is just a term for your level? Yeah, so it kind of affects a bunch of stuff, but then through that we can use instinct to kind of branch into other places where just the word level, you couldn't. So creatures of a certain instinct level can do certain things, or unlock certain, like, kind of species effects or certain, like, abilities that are behind that kind of... I mean, uh, you could uh, still get away with just calling it level. I'm not saying I'm yeah. against the idea. Yeah. But like yeah. taxonomy, we've been bringing it up like a bunch of times. It's like if we want to keep it in the common theme. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. how we were talking about it. I I actually was the one who stated last time in Caria that instinct is actually the opposite of intelligence. When people were starting to go, instinct is kind of intelligence, isn't it? I was like, no, they're the exact opposite of each other. <laughs> so then say you're... I'm just going to keep keep running on this octopus thing your instinct three octopus you unlock uh an additional an additional ability to craft things you get yeah, better at crafting and then at instinct five you get an a, a bonus to your agility for instance which allows you to be better at crafting or you unlock like the dexterous trait or what have you i think most of those base stats get unlocked just by becoming the octopus okay here here's yeah okay so here's the distinction have... here's the distinction here's the distinction okay and i think i'm i'm onto something actually just instantly after trying to define this distinction Instinct. So you're. So we got to remember that we're not the animal per se, right? You start out as one thing and you grow your stats and evolve and and persist through. So when you upgrade to a new animal, you don't want to have your instinct going back down to a reset, right? 
Is it going to stay high when you become the new animal and instantly unlock all this stuff for you? Well, you could be, like, the instinct level for that animal. Yeah, or, or you might need to be a certain number of instinct to become that animal, at which point it's a stat almost, more than a level. Or you just need to level up your animal to that instinct, but then... I guess there could be a base level requirement to be that animal, and the level is associated to you, the player, not the animal you currently are. You meet that requirement, you can become that animal. As that grows, you'll unlock more abilities of that animal. If you were to just change to another animal at that point, your instinct's not going to change. You'll just unlock everything up until that level. Is that how we want it to play out? When you use ultimate skill based on that animal, that's passive boost for X seconds, like Wrath of the Berserker, Bar of Diablo 3. Altered Beast. I'm not sure I like the idea of an ultimate skill. Yeah, I don't particularly like that either for the game that we're making. Yeah. I don't think it makes sense here. I love it in Diablo, but I don't think it makes sense here. Uh, I do think the the instinct being tied to the player makes sense i'm not sure how we're going to deal with like you suddenly become a bear and now you can do all of this bear stuff immediately um but like then do you say that the you have to spend a certain amount of time as a bear to get bear skills, or do you just immediately get bear skills? There might be a certain amount of time to get certain bear or enhance certain bear skills. Like we can have like tiered skills. So like they figure out how to slash better, figure out how to, you know. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm 100 percent on instinct being a skill right now. Not level. Or not a stat, not 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 a level. Just so I can do stuff like Bite scales off of ferocity and instinct. But yeah, you, you still could do that, right? That, that was the point. I don't like scaling off of a level, though. Never been a fan of level scaling in games. It makes things kind of absurd. It gives too much advantage to a player high level. Like just leveling up, period, it automatically makes you better and you don't have to think of it. I'd much rather the leveling give you points that you can use to make yourself better. But it's up to you to use them properly. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have to have it something be like that effectiveness. Like, it doesn't be like a huge modifier. It was being like just something to kind of categorize level. But, like, we can just call it level. It's, it's the same. You, you aren't human in Caria. There is no human. No human in this at all. You're not human. You are an animal. It's This is meant to represent the animals working together to fight back against some aliens that have come to the planet to test and experiment on them, extract their DNA, humans don't exist. The animals are working together to fight back and save the planet. So it's not a human becoming a bear and having to be too much of a bear, it's literally a bear working to save the world. So. It was Pookie's idea. Thanks, Pookie. We love your idea and we're running with it. So... If you have, like, bunny levels, and then bear levels, and etc, etc levels, uh, I don't think we need a level tied to the player at all. I don't think we need that. I, I'm, I'm with you. I think it's just to spend the time to increase your stats. And you would keep your stats as you change animals yep. because the animals have stat requirements. Yeah. And they have tag requirements as well. Yeah, so you have to have the tags so, and the stats to meet it so that you can become the animal so you can gain its passes. Maybe even an active set, and it also brings in your uh, DNA slots. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's 
simple. You're just. I don't think it needs seconds. to be complicated. You're just. No, I, I want simple. Need simple. Don't you. I've, come on. How many times have you heard me say this? What's rule number one of game design? Keep it simple. Well, a game should be easy to play, but difficult to master. Right? To play this game, you, no matter what you're doing, you're getting points. You have to figure out which of your five or six. We're up to six stats. So which of your six stats do you want to put your points into? And what animal do you want to become? It's easy to play. Now, if you want to be good at it, you have to consider a lot. <laughs> that's how it should. That's right where it should be. I can play it, but I'm going to lose until I get good, and then I can win. Do it like Oblivion. No. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean we get to put horse armor in? Yes. Get out. But it is paid DLC. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you pay us extra, we'll add a horse armor. Do it like Oblivion, where you level up enemies, get so spongy, it takes like 400 hits. Well, the enemies are you. Other than the main raid boss, which will take probably four or five hundred hits, most of it is going to be you guys fighting you guys. Unless you're not a predator. If you're a prey, it's going to be working with other people in order to solidify your herd and defend yourselves. Hmm. So since we've got, we've got gear, we've got stats... I have I have one more thing about leveling that I want to talk about. Okay. Do we want to have when we were initially designing this, we had changing animal as a prestige system. Is that something that we still want to include? Yes. Okay. So you're you're you switch to a new animal, you reset your level cuz you need to relearn how to be a new animal. There's As level you level up, that. no, no, no character, no player level, but animal level. Because as your animal level goes up, you then get better at being that animal. Okay, that's the here, here's here, 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 here. Here's why. Here's how I see us not needing levels at all. Okay, when you choose the animal to become you're going to get your equipment slots you're going to get your passives maybe all of them maybe not all of them right away and you're going to get your base skills this is all an animal package are we agreed on that you know bite and all that stuff is associated with being the animal yeah okay they scale off of stats so as you increase stats all of those are going to get stronger depending on which stats you're making and they can have stat requirements as a minimum stat to use that Okay, how do you get stats? Uh, yeah, I don't want it to be level up and gain stats. But we do need to increase stats. So let's talk about increasing stats and not how leveling do, how up. Do we get... um, I, I say why fix what's broken? We can have a level system. When you level, you get to put stats. You get a couple of points. You can put them into your stats. I think that's how leveling works. Didn't you start as saying a, there was a, a beginning where you wanted money and experience to be the same thing? So what if yes. we do a literal Dark Souls system where instead of leveling, like they, they give it a level, but we could just take the level number off and you just use those numbers. You like, just use almost, currency to buy stats. Like uh, much more similar to Shadowrun, if you remember when we were playing Shadowrun, where you gain karma and you spend the karma to raise your stat, and the amount of karma needed to raise the stat is a number times the stat. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay. The, the reason I was bringing it back to leveling is because of how much time I've spent in From Software games. And just that being like, when you get a new stat point, you get a level. level. You get yeah. a new stat point, you get a level. Yeah, there's a lot of other things that are scaling off a level at the same time there. All your defense going up and stuff I don't think we need. A few more to balance. How about yeah. DNA are always tied to very basic features for that animal, but mutagen are actually combo of other animals inside of your played animal. Well, the, the problem is the DNA is acquired by hunting. Or combat, or how do you get it as a herd animal if you're not hunting in combat?
I like Arcanum level system. You get one point per level to put into anything, and that's it. That's basically Dark Souls. Every level takes more of your souls and or blood echoes, depending on the game you're playing. You put one point into any stat, and that puts your level up one. And then the next level is going to cost more, and just by putting a stat up, it causes your level to go up. Rather than leveling up and getting a stat point to put in, they just reverse the system to streamline it. You put your stat in, it automatically levels you. Which is a great system. So I'm going to go on a bit of a, of a not rant, but a, just to say, just I'm going to let a little bunch of stuff roll. Okay. Just to, because we brought up how we're going to do what... So remember we, but before we talked about prey being more of like herbivore, so maybe to tie into like the whole alien thing, maybe like this kind of ecosystem environment has been like contaminated with some kind of chemical or something they have, and then now when the herbivores eat it, that's how they get their kind of skill points, and then the predators when they eat the herbivores get it in their system as well, and that's kind of how we do it. So like they have to go and try to eat this stuff, but when you're out trying to you know eat your kind of grass, your leaves or whatever, that's where the predators are kind of lurking out. So that's kind of like just the wilderness area. Maybe we have safe areas that are kind of like communes that like, you know, there's just no, there's some sort of kind of weird civilization thing going on. But like maybe if you're trying to get DNA points, which is, you know, if you're herbivore, you're eating stuff, you have to find somewhere to try to eat. And if you're a predator, you're trying to go out and find where the herbivores are eating. What if we simply break it down as if you're at, if you're in the chat, you're grazing and eating and gaining and if you're not in the chat you're in a safe place and you're not grazing and eating therefore if you're in chat you can be attacked and if you're not in chat you cannot be attacked i don't know because i don't want to discourage people from not being in chat if they don't want to be attacked if they want to just like hang out right we don't i don't want to like put them at risk i guess it's something that can toggle through it yeah, we could do it as a toggle and you just you gain nothing and you can't interact with the game or you can interact with the game and gain stuff but you're part of the game and can be attacked finger do we need pvp yes why yes why so I, love I don't know if we, need, if we need force pvp or not because i know that will turn off a lot of people i don't think this game suits pvp yeah. i don't think we need pvp i'm gonna eat people <laughs> but like that gets really weird and balancing that it would make it very hard especially with like okay so how are the predators the herd. gaining then they can eat npc what? animals or something they eat npc animals they eat aliens if there's no p there has to be some pvp options yeah, but maybe you not can force the into whole it. leveling out thing. Maybe more like a dual system, so we don't just like, because then kind of being a herbivore is going to be like very hard, and most people will be predators, and there's not going to be a lot of herbivores. And the balance of like, there's going to be like twenty predators to five herbivores is going to be kind of you know intense for the herbivore with like five things attacking it at any given. Well, we can do a lot of stuff around that player versus panel. That's not fair. <laughs> there aren't nearly enough of you guys to stop us. Yeah, we don't Probably forget we aliens. Are not accounts. We we are the aliens. Yeah, we actually control the code, so we can just send aliens after you whenever we want. <laughs> um, I agree with PvP being optional, just so that it's more approachable for everyone. Keep things a bit easier too, for like balance wise. Um, and then it's something that we can kind of slowly iterate more and more into and then maybe kind of make the NPC stop there, but it's not as rewarding as player versus player stuff, so it, it takes a lot longer if you want, you know, Just your skill points and stuff. Do it like Borderlands, where you agree to fight each other. Uh, it just feels like... kind of lackluster to just be hunting NPC animals. And it also That's what this game is, dude. This is a lackluster yeah. game. Yes, it's not supposed to be fairly casual. It's like, so much it's more still... interesting to be uh, trying to find you, prey people. You, that you should can hunt. be able. You should be able to opt in to go to a PvP area. You can then PvP against uh, other predators or herbivores who want to go in and try their hand, or whatever. But we're not going to balance it. Okay, the herbivore. PvP area 
going to... I, I want it to be rewarded. You should be rewarded for the risks of PvP. Yeah. Do we agree with yeah, this? So like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if absolutely. you're in the PvP field, so the PvP field could be the one that's rich in whatever this stuff that's come out of the aliens is. So you get a really, really low amount of points as like an idol level. But if you go and make yourself PvP active, you're in the rich nutrients area and you gain two, point, two times or four times the stuff per minute or 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever the span check that we have to generate these points is as a prey but you can be hunted while you're there too and if you're hunted you can't go back there for x amount of time some small amount of time yeah gladiator yeah, like with that. no gladiators only the lion the, the lion ring at that point <laughs> the lionators <laughs> Yeah, if we wanted to do like weekly tournaments eventually, it could be something where like anyone that's in that zone just gets like abducted by the aliens and then like put into like an arena together just yeah. for like amusement. Right now, the weekly event that we've been thinking is a weekly raid event where everyone's working together to stop that NPC, and that's an interesting one because the NPC is visible and strong and, and takes work. But... I definitely like focusing maybe a bit on PVE first since it's a bit easier to build out as well as like community wise. Oh, I agree. Um, I don't P disagree. PvP can get can get salt. We don't want to like start, you know, starting really vicious rivalries in our chat. I love salt. <laughs> Salt's fun until you're the one who has to moderate the chat and start banning people. <laughs> that doesn't seem fun. Don't want to have to ban viewers. Uh, depends, you know. Depends. There's. I mean, ra there's, there's rage bots got most of that covered. There, there is acceptable mocking each other too, like. You know, I, I didn't get banned when I was playing Halo 2 and shot Buddy in the back of the head at point blank with a shotgun and looked over him and uh, looked over at him and went, Massage my cock with the walls of your esophagus! Yeah, but it also depends on, like, Twitch a bit too, right? If they're putting this on their platform, we gotta be careful of, like, acceptable bullying. There would yeah, I didn't I mean, see anything there's, on there's the slinging, side. There's kind of. slinging shit, and then there's actually being a jackass, and actually yeah. being a jackass will get you banned. Yeah, and we don't want actual jackasses, but just talking shit to somebody you beat, that's part of the game. That's why we beat people. So we can make and fun of them. If you opt to go into the, the PvP area, yep, you're getting that. You're opening yourself up to that. You can choose to go in there or not. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying that that's why it's a good thing, because if we didn't have that, then, like, people who don't want to be exposed to, like, that competitiveness don't have to be, they don't have to, But, like, but at the same to, time, uh, as a, as a Trazer, the worst thing that can happen to you in PvP is you can't get the bonus for a while. And so it's almost always worthy to go into the PvP area and last as yeah. long as you can and avoid as many hunters as you can to get as many points as you can and when you finally get hunted you're just timed out for a bit you get less points per interval and then as soon as you can go back in you're going to want to go back in to get those extra points yeah yeah, yeah. No, that, that, i'm agreeing that's why i said yeah. that that's why this is a good idea okay instead of just forcing it on everyone yeah okay i, I like this now yeah as, as long as pvp is highly encouraged and that's where i'm at like yeah if, yeah, you're not, do, if you're not if you're not partaking forced. in the PvP, you're basically playing the game wrong, but you don't have to do it. Yeah, it's like Dark Souls. Like some people play with invading off just because they just don't want to deal with it, right? They just like some people just don't like that. Don't yeah, want and, to... and some people play with a shield because they don't realize that you're supposed to roll. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people who I don't want the PvP. I don't play Dark yeah. Souls online. I'm there yeah, to beat the fair. bosses. I like beating the bosses. That's fun. <laughs> Yeah, so we can have people still around for the boss stuff, too. I did like, have quite a bit of game. fun with my invasions in Dark Souls 3 still. I did. I enjoyed being invaded in the game. It was so much fun. I mean, come on. We never would have got Soapy laying down and confusing the poor invader, who then stands there and watches me roll out of the laydown and three-shot him before he even gets to touch me. Yeah, but that's different. That's an action game. That's not just queue up for combat. <laughs> that was should we? Fun. We should write this down somewhere in the. Go for it. In the document. You're in the document. It is true. I have it open right now. How about if you choose to re-enter old areas during story slash main game mode? It is PvP. Um, we don't have a story mode. There is no story. Yeah. Slash main game. This is just a 
play it, idle it, play against the community slash with the community. If you want to play with the community, you play herbivore. If you want to play against the community, you play predator. The herbivores will graze as long as they can. Herbivores will be based around making alliances with other herbivores so that you can pack up. And that will increase your defense, I'd imagine. Different things like that. Maybe give you uh, perks to your uh, initiative as well so that... Ooh, I like that idea. There's, there's a good way to have passives. Different herbivores, part of their passive could be what benefit they give people within the herd. So like, you know, certain, certain herbivores could be really focused on alerting and they'll raise the initiative so that they can detect the predators before the predators get to you to make sure you get to act first. You'll always want to have one of those in your group, your, your herd, to watch out for you. Things like that. Yeah. And then you could have certain pack animals that are really self-focused and certain pack animals that are more group-focused. The ones that are more group-focused will probably have an easier time joining herds. They'll all want to have one around. Do sneak like a Bethesda game and hide in plain sight. Well, that's, that's the thing really that cool. animals do. Camouflage is the thing. It's not really hiding in plain sight in Bethesda, but yeah, the AI is pretty dumb. My favorite thing to do in a Bethesda game in the shops with only one person is go upstairs so that the shopkeeper follows you upstairs to watch you so that you don't steal anything and then jump off of the balcony or whatever down the stairs and steal all the stuff in the main shop before he gets down the stairs. In Skyrim, you can just put a bucket over their head and then just <laughs> steal it and then sell it back to them. <laughs> I so never wild. thought of that. That's no, it works. It works. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, fuck you, Bethesda. Although they are working on Doom Eternal. Well, they are funding. That, that's, funding. That's they're funding. They're funding. Bethesda they're the funding. publisher. They are funding Bethesda Doom the Eternal. Different from Bethesda, the game developer. Yeah. I still don't like them. At least they're they're working to bring that to us. Yeah. Funding. They're funding. We don't want it if they're working on it. <laughs> uh, so consumables what are we thinking we've got itemization got crafting uh, we've, we've decided on intelligence. instinct and intelligence so consumables that's it should those be like certain like plants and stuff like that that are edible and only things with like a high enough intelligence can figure out like what things are actually edible, so the little ones that can actually like find and then use. There's an idea. As as very low level crafting things, I agree. I think that's great. If you have a base level intelligence of some number, then you can figure out which plants are edible, pick them up, carry them with you, and then you can use them later to heal. But for higher level things, you need to be able to combine these plants in different ratios to make like more effective heals or have very flammable things for like firebombs. So what I'm thinking and hearing from Pseudo's idea is a simple gathering system. Yeah, I'm thinking more like, I'm not sure if I wanted to have a potions because it doesn't make sense that like all of a sudden they can just make glass and bottle and cork rather than just like knowing how to get things from the environment that are usable well, you know, right out of the gate there, and then there are combine people, them further on to make them there are people that made potions long before we could make glass and stuff like that yeah that's what i'm saying but there is ayahuasca like, and stuff like that yeah that's exactly what i said like what i meant was like not sure if we wanted like consumables as in like the liquids in a thing or just have it be like the raw items that people start just kind of combining and adding on as they get higher up we just keep it as like just raw ingredients my, my point with ayahuasca is it is a fluid it was actually a, a cooked fluid and everything, but it was made in like, you know, wooden bark bowls and really primitive stuff. It, it wasn't, you know, glass and modern day crafting. And Caria brings up an interesting idea. Do you want to have like temporary buffs that you can find in the wild? Yes. Like you have a shrine that gives you plus five defense for your next three combats or something? I think that would be really cool. Yes, in combat 2.0. Yes. Yeah, we could have those be like contaminated ponds or something. 
Yep, mainly because we don't have a mechanic for you to find them right now. <laughs> but uh, one of the ideas we've been throwing around for Combat 2.0 is group combat with dungeons, so you can get a group of animals together with you and send them into the dungeon and it'll run all the combat and see if you guys complete. At which point you could totally run across shrines and stuff like that in there and we might even be able to throw out a, a choice for the group on if they want to explore the shrine or not, something like that. Yeah, I loved D1 shrines. I loved the I loved the cryptic nature of them. I think it could work in Combat 1.0 in a very simple or simple, very simple methodology of you go out for combat or you go out for your grazing, whatever, and it's the bot just goes, "Hey, you found a shrine. Do you want to interact with it?" I'm okay with this. Uh, maybe like a 10% chance to hit one every time you enter the PVP area. Or lower. You're traveling or to lower. that place, it's you've come across X. Yeah, and then you have like a, a list of shrines that you can come across, and oh. you might get a good defensive one or a good offensive one or whatever. I like the idea of having a chance to encounter one every combat. I think the shrines should be multi-combat length, so having them every combat doesn't no, no, make no. sense. You don't unless get one it's every extremely, combat. But every extremely combat. Extremely. Every combat has a chance of encountering one. Not does encounter, encounter but has a chance. Because if you think about what combat is, in a sense, in this game, combat is one thing chasing another thing. So the, the shrine would be like, you know, one thing's running for its life, and the predator's total tunnel vision on this prey and then finally either gets it and kills it and oh hey here whoa where the hell have i found myself oh my god it's a shrine or the prey manages to escape and then oh i've lost it but where the hell am i kind of feeling yeah yeah i i think it would make more sense to have it at the beginning of combat rather than at the end of combat but that's make, something that we can play around with later it doesn't make, sense. It doesn't make in world sense yeah. but it makes game mechanic sense but it think of it this way at that point the only one who gets the shrine is the one who won the combat so it's like a percentage yeah. chance to get a shrine every time you win combat at, on combat win, you have some small percentage chance to get a shrine, which then gives you buffs for the next couple of combats. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Remember exploding shrine from D2? I sure do. How about buffs that are temporary from shrines slash alchemy lab shrines with random buffs in the PvP arena? Arenas are, are labs running slash getting close to them. You gain strange attributes like exploding stuff. Uh, so, okay, here's here's where we're at right now. And none of this is set in stone. We want your opinion still. But where we're thinking is the PvP zone is just one zone. It's essentially a field or a grazing spot, you know, a, a water hole where whatever the stuff that the aliens have been putting out is high and rich in. Therefore, it's the spot that the grazers most want to be at. So they'd want to go there, right? There's water and there's the most nutritious of the foods for them. And therefore that is where the predators go because predators in real life tend to go where all of the prey is. And that sort of initially creates a PV... You want, you want to see what our PVP zone looks at, like? Just, just watch any show about Africa focused on a watering hole. <laughs> You'll see a bunch of yeah. prey all huddled together, moving around together, Drinking water, eating grass, and there's a couple of them keeping an eye on all the predators that are all the fuck around them. <sighs> I'm sorry I jumped between topics here. Tier 1 DNA, Tier 2 Mutagen DNA, Tier 3 Nano DNA, and last tier, Cyber Genetics. And more sci-fi, while Mutagen is more combo of the natural DNAs, making Tier 3 the higher one. Um... Maybe not cyber genetics because Rage was kind of anti-cyber, but uh, no, I do yeah, I do yeah. like I'm not sure if we need cyber of DNA. I think I agree with you on maybe four tiers is probably the most as long as we're doing the tiers the same way I said, because creating two tier threes is going to be a fair bit to use them to create a tier four, and a really good tier four may even need three tier threes. Take a lot of work. Um, 
but I do like work. I want items to take work. I don't want people to just be like, I want to make this item, and like two hours later, yay, I've got this item. You don't care about that item. Everybody has that item if it only takes two hours to make. If it took you a month to make that item, you're going to lord it over everyone. Look what I've got. Because they didn't put the work in. They don't want to put the work in. It takes a long time. You're not going to be one of the few with it. And that goes back to us with our brag idea where you can spend talking points to brag about your stuff. Yep. Yep, this is a game of advancing and bragging. That's the core of it. Get stronger. Get stronger than other people. Brag on stream about how you're stronger than other people. We even talked about spending bits to create animations of the actual hunts. So, you know, if there's a really, really well-known or, or strong pre uh, prey that's out in the area right now, and you think you can take them, and you've been shit-talking them, you could pay the bits and have the whole stream watch the hunt as it runs across the bottom of the stream. Yeah, I like that idea. <laughs> we were even talking about scaling how quickly they move across the bottom of the screen based on the turns that it would take. Or instinct DNA for the predators and symbiosis DNA for the herb. Hmm. Since symbiosis used both in parasites and in floral slash plants, I have no idea if this would be a thing. Last idea, I think. I hope not. I love your ideas. Keep them coming. You have helped yeah, us you've got some great so ones. much. You you completely filled out the crafting system for us, and we loved your ideas. Did you know that you're a game designer? You may not have done it before, but you're actually a pretty good game designer. You should probably stick with it, man. You just did it. You yeah. just designed some game. You designed a crafting system, at least the basic outline of it. Make sure you're sure when we do the, the digging in and start creating individual pieces to go together. That'll be the fun part. Very pseudo. I said and they also brought up shrines. And that's a, yeah. that's a good thing as well. Yeah, yeah, you also brought I up created, the idea of shrines. Uh, quite a bit. Give Blizzard some ideas during Alpha of D3. I wish they would have nice. taken them. It might have been a better game. <laughs> I like D3 after loot 2.0. <laughs> yeah, he's talking Alpha. You can't tell me you liked it at release. Nobody liked it, at eh, least. It was all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the combat still felt better than just about anything else. I preferred Path of Exile to it greatly. Yeah, but that's because you're hard in on D2. It's, it's got that uh, nostalgic clunkiness to it. I just loved the build system. City. The yeah, complexity of my builds. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so back to what we were actually talking about, which was a crafting system. Uh, we've got our gathered and crafted consumables. Do we need other consumables? Because we want to have uh, perhaps like offensive stuff that could be gathered from alien tech, like you find oh. okay. grenades or something. Let's say gathered and crafted is the only ways we need to create them. But let's brainstorm real quick on what some of them could do. Damage, um, poisonous, explosive. I did mean poisonous. Yeah, I can talk about D3 ideas I had for days. Can link to Diablo fans sometime. Collection of many ideas. Bleed, yeah. Bleed is something that can definitely be caused by consumables. Mobility? Like a slime or a goo or something? Slow, stun, put them both in the same category. Slime slash goo. Nets. Snares. And stat boost, I guess. Temporary stat boost, stand in a can, or uh, stand in a can, shrine in a yeah. can. Thorn damage, yeah. obviously, for sonic animals. Uh, thorn damage, we were more thinking for stuff. Oh, sonic, like Sonic the Hedgehog. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I um, gonna, you could, like, you could wrap yourself say, in thorns. Yeah, yeah, we were thinking. Temporary. Like, uh, uh, porcupine, stuff like that for the thorns. Um, an interesting animal that would have thorns that a lot of people don't consider is a shark. 
They've actually got sandpaper skin that's extremely coarse and rough and will shred you and make you bleed just brushing up next to you. Yep. Then you bleed into the water, and then they smell that, and it's all over. Uh, but yeah, stat boosts could be like, um, you know, stim injections. I don't need injections, but it could just Adrenaline. be like certain plants that are just like have those components in them. Yeah, I mean, we're, it's also alien stuff too. That's right? true. Good, just getting good crafted stuff. here. Big, big just, just, just brainstorming as we go, right? Yep, yep. Adrenaline for escaping, or I mean, adrenaline would probably just boost all stats and lower intelligence and instinct. I would probably raise we, instinct. We are having, uh, we are having flying animals. We are having. I'm not sure what you mean by stomp. But we are having flying animals, and we are going to have burrowing animals eventually. Yeah, so here's, um, aside from stats, we've also thought of tags that can be associated with the monster, or animal. So in order to become a certain animal, you'll need to get the tags through leveling and, and purchasing and applying them to yourself, as well as have the base stats required to become that animal. So like, again, to be a bird, you might need flying, unless you're a penguin, then you're probably going to need swimming. If you want to be a duck, you need flying and swimming. Not saying we're going to have all those, just ideas, ideas, ways to separate animals here. Venomous and poisonous are distinct differences. Knockbacks. I mean, it won't be a tag, but an attack. I think that would be an attack more than a consumable, but I could definitely see like a, an elephant. But how would we do a knockback? Just a good I, I think a knockback turn. really essentially becomes a stun. They, they're mechanically the same thing. It takes a turn off of the turn order without allowing the predator to attack. Yeah. And we can just implement them in the same way. So I Should think I'd probably knock back a stun. Let them know, but um, just in case they're not aware, th this game's going to be played through the chat, so it's not going to be like a kind of like real-time interacting with the controller or anything like that. You're just kind of saying what you're doing on your kind of perceived turn. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're just giving commands to the bot to tell it what you want to do. And then it'll go and do that. Rabies. <laughs> there, there could be a berserk, give you uh, extra strength, but all you can do is basic attack. That's totally a, a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'm maybe not rabies, because rabies you'll die. Yeah, you will maybe, eventually maybe die call from it, it berserk instead. <laughs> and there are definitely a lot of. Uh, Things you can find out in the wilderness that will make things go cool berserk. There are actually insects that mind control. Yeah, and fungus that does mind control. Oh yeah, that's a weird one. That's a Cordyceps, really weird man. one. How does it work? <laughs> so, in Carrie, I'm not sure if you know about this. Here's here's a crazy one for everyone because Rage just mentioned it. The fungus that he's talking about actually will infect an insect and grow inside of the insect until it works its way up to the insect's brain and then it will adjust the psychology the actual chemistry of their brain to change their behavior where normally all of their instinct tells them to go down and hide he will cause it to go up all the way to the top into exposed area and get eaten by a bird they encourage them to go get eaten because when the bird eats them, they also consume the fungus. And then the fungus's spores go into the excrement of the bird. And then when the insects eat the excrement of the bird, which is what they live off of, it will infect the new insects that ate it and grow inside of them and take over their brains and continue this life cycle. Amazing. <laughs> Cordyceps is so cool. <laughs> I think that fungus were part of my ex. So yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. They're an ex for a reason, right? How oh, I always remember it. Okay, uh, to go back to consumables, so should we have it that certain consumables can't be like crafted and only found? So like stuff that would drop in, let's say like a raid boss, it's like kind of like alien tech or something that it doesn't yeah, really I mean, make sense for these things to build. We can totally have some stuff that isn't crafted, but I think everything should eventually be craftable. 
I think super strong stuff like explosives should be drop only. Could be a very complex craft on a very high level ape. Damage confusion. Like skunk spray animals go crazy. Yep, yeah. I'm sure it's both. I'm pretty sure when animals get sprayed, they're like, what the, what the hell is going on? Why does yeah. everything suck? Why is everything terrible? Yeah. Oh my god, why does my whole face burn? I've made a poor decision. I regret um, literally in, all of the things. Unless they're a dog, then they're like, I'm gonna go get another one. That will make this better. <laughs> and they just come up to the to you, your the the owner, going, Look what I did. Yep. Been there. Entrapment? Spider whip? Yep, yep, that's the uh, slow stun. We've got nets, snares, traps. Uh, I talked about my one of my favorite spiders from the Amazon rainforest earlier that has four long legs and four short legs and uses the short legs to hold a branch and uses the long legs to literally knit and weave a net and then tucks that net up in itself and shoots its legs out to catch insects flying by while it's on its branch. Oh yeah, of course, it's past fall. Leaves all fall at that point, they're just dropping. Be used to it by now, it's been Tech. happening for 60 years. <laughs> but this year it'll be different. Oh, of course it will. They've spent 40 million on four players, how could they lose? You don't spend half your budget on four players and expect to win. Not hockey. Um, I think, like, we've... Other than just getting down into actually coming up with consumables, I think we understand where consumables are going. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, will things like eyes, smell, etc. be a thing in this game? Attributes for it? I mean, we'll just assume everything has eyes and smell. If something has really, really good eyes or really, really good smell, we do want it to be mechanically relevant, but that will probably manifest in the passive bonuses of becoming that animal. Yeah. So you can't rip up my eyes and swap in some new ones? Not yet. Cyber eyes. Maybe I want in loop. cyber eyes. No. I want Cyber Eyes. I saw an article they've been working on Cyber Eyes. They've made some pretty good progress with it. They're talking about actually having Cyber Eyes that can see a wider spectrum of vision than our eyes can that they can put into blind people. Go from no sight to all of the sight. And I saw that and went, I want Cyber Eyes. My eyes suck. I want Cyber Eyes. It's all fun and games so someone hacks your eyes. Yeah, that's uh, internet thing. connected eyes. <laughs> you know that's what it's keeping like, man. My my new office, the fridge and dishwasher are both on the Wi-Fi. It is weird. Oh, so you need to write yourself a little script that turns on the coffee machine when you're like and just set timeouts on it so that on when you're on your way to work you just run the script and then you go to work and coffee is ready when you get there. Yeah, with geofencing that's yeah, just like when it be detect when I leave the house. Sharks also have a sixth sense to allow them to detect electro uh, activity in the water, which is created by muscle in the water. Yeah, this, this they can small... read the EMF, yeah. which is... Yeah, the small magnetic fields created through muscle movement in the water can be detected by the noses. Uh, owls, eagles, hawks, good eyes. And foxes listen for their prey under the snow. They absolutely do. And it's absolutely amazing to watch them go... There's one right here, and just dive into the snow and come out with a vole. Cool. Face first, full send. Yep. Whales, yep. Yeah. We talked about uh, sonar being a tag, potentially required. Because it applies to so many creatures. Whales, and dolphins, and bats, and lots, lots of sea creatures, primarily. Because, turns out, sound travels really well through dense objects. Yep. As do shockwaves. Don't 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 be in water while there's like explosives and stuff happening. And 
places. It's real bad. You can't decide between a dog or a cat. Fox will do. It's in the middle. I'm a tattoo apprentice, so whenever people don't know what to get, tweet them. Yeah, That's cool. I've always wanted a pet fox. They are kind of right in the middle. They even bark. You know that barking developed in foxes when they domesticated them? Yep. They, one of the strange things that happened when they domesticated the fox was it just started barking to communicate with people. Is that the same with cats? Like, they don't meow in the wild, they only meow when they're around. Um, started getting domesticated by humans. Well, we're glad you're having fun in Caria. We're glad you're here. Yeah, 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 by all means, spam the chat. No one else's. You're not spamming chat, you're just keeping it active. Everyone else is being lazy and lurking. That's okay. I hope you all get in ideas, too. I'm lurking. I'm the lurker. So we've got crafting, we've got statting. So combat's going to play out. We know how it's going to play out. We know... So is there really a hunting that they can do without PvP? I'd say so. I just not as rewarding. Yeah, just a, the same thing. Combat against NPCs, which gets you your rewards. I think it'd be good for like, so then people can still practice certain builds and stuff like that. You don't have to put it right into like a high risk situation. I'm an excited lurker. I want to play this game. Really. I'm glad, Pookie. We'll try to get it done for you. You get any ideas, throw them out there. People want to hear your ideas. I know you're real busy painting away with that awesome new painting over there, but we're all excited to see that. I'm thinking combat for non-PVP. Non-event. I, I don't see why it needs to be any different. Just lesser rewards. Can't be broadcast. No bid options or anything. We don't want to spam people with boring NPC farming combat. Should have a cooldown, I'd imagine. You can't just spam it over and over and over and over and over again. I think I think both of them should probably have cooldowns, but the other one will be a bit longer. So it's kind of like talking pipes. If you're not talking, it takes a while before you actually get any. Maybe not a long time, but it's like, I guess like if you're, I guess we have to decide, I guess if you're a herbivore, it might be different from a, uh, a predator. The predator is going to want the encounter. I'm not sure if the herbivore is going to necessarily want. Herbivores do encounter. not want encounter. They want to graze, which is why I'm saying they get a natural bonus. That's the lurker version, right? Just for being there, not taking part in chat or anything and lurking, they gain a natural bonus. If they enter the PvP area, making them vulnerable, they get a much higher bonus. So it's much better to be in there. Yeah. The predators... And then there's also the, the combination ones, so... We need to make... Okay, here's some issues. Issues. We need to make... Larger herds... More valuable. Predators need a limitation to the PvP area. We have a limitation for the herbivores. They can enter whenever they want, but if they get hunted, they're out for a little while before they can enter again. But what happens? The predators need to have a reason to be there, right? Because the hunting the, the herbivores there is going to be far more valuable than hunting their, you know, every 15 minute little NPC hunt. And they have a cooldown after a successful hunt. I think after they do a successful hunt, they then have, you know, something that's slightly longer than, uh, slightly longer than the cooldown for a herbivore. They're, they're full. They are full. Yeah, I was going to think either full or I was more thinking the time it takes them to eat it. But yeah, like full, full would make more sense. You eat it, you get the points, no, no time delay or anything. Bam, points, and then you're full, and you have to wait a while before you can hunt again. And if you lose to a predator... So if a predator beats you, you're timed out. Not if you're a prey. If you're a predator, if a predator beats you in combat, you're timed out. That's the wording. 
Right, because a predator yeah. can then attack a predator, and he's winning the territory. He gets the hunt priority now. Instead of having to share it. You can totally share it and each take your own target, but you don't have to. That's very predator behavior. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Successful hunt cooldown, I like. Predators have a limitation in PvP. So we have, let's say, uh, base points for prey outside of PvP area 1. Now these aren't final, I'm just throwing numbers down so we can have a number in our head and kind of work with something here. It helps a lot instead of throwing X and Y down to actually put it in and see your ratios play out, give you an idea. Do we do we need to affect the, the stats? Or are bullet points are on now, I, I, I misinterpreted yeah, these, that. Yeah, these are rewards. Yeah, these are rewards, yeah, sorry. Yeah, your, your EXP. We'll call it EXP. So, you know, every 15 minutes you get one point, but if you're in there every... 15 minutes or whatever you get four but third size should also impact this question so we're like put our herd go into a pvp zone together and then how does combat work is that uh, just like a predator manages to get one away from them a herd I, I think of much much simpler herd is more like an alliance system and it's not everybody agreeing to it it's two-way alliances with transit of trust or no transit of trust so you only gain value from the direct bird agreements you've made with other people so you might have 20 people in your herd but just because that person that makes up your herd is in your herd he might only have three people in his herd because that's the only people he's met with and associated with so it's maybe not the best analogy, but it's the way the mechanic works that I want it to work. So you have to be in the chat, interacting with people. And if you're a herbal herbivore or a pack animal, the more social you are, the more you're in the place meeting more people, the more people you've encountered than to join your pack and the stronger you yourself are. Okay. So, for bonuses, and do you, does the predator then get more reward for hunting a stronger target? The bigger herd gives the predator more reward as well for going after that. I think that makes sense. The Usually. turning in Rage's head right now. Because combat is so simple and hunting is so simple, I don't know that, like, just randomly getting assigned to a herd animal, like, it should give benefits to the herbivore, but not, like, I don't know that it makes sense to give it anything for the predator, because they're still just getting the same prey. But they are and going it's not after gonna... a more difficult right. prey. I guess it does it... Re replicate the animal kingdom better to not give them anything extra. Yeah. Because then your predators are really going to be focused on picking off the outlier. Which will really suck for new players. Yes, it's going to be created, created very cannibalist, but you don't have to go into the PvP area right away. If you're a herbivore, you can spend your time building some alliances or go into the PvP area to get your points right away. You'll get hunted and timed out, but you've got something to show for it. And while you're there and talking and, and chatting with people, waiting for yourself to get hunted and timed out, and just get as many points as you can because it's totally passive non-interactive at that point your interactivity is either the stream or talking to people in chat and trying to build those alliances slash herd size so that you can be a little stronger and survive longer in that area but it is going to be a very very cannibalistic 
setup where people that have been playing for a long time are just going to be ignored by the Predators because they're more work than they're worth for their reward. And they're just going to focus on all the new players. I don't like the idea of being able to pick your target. I think you get what you get. But I do definitely want them to be able to go after someone. Like if you're paying sure, points. There can, there can be duels. Like you can pay points slash bits to do a duel. Like it specifically set up a combat between these two people. But otherwise you just get what you get. It can get kind of bad as well as for balancing. If you know certain players with certain stats, then you can just keep retargeting and you'll know that you'll win 100% of the time. Depends if we, you know, if there's always a chance to escape and there's always a chance to evade, no matter how much stronger than they are, it's not so bad. So it's going to be about balance at that point. Yeah, but if you verse prey that completely just dumpsters you and gets away in like the first two or three like after the first two or three turns it's very obvious that they're very strong and you can choose to target people you're never really going to target that person again like we were saying they're powerful but it should just be like you know you get what you get and then you can attack someone who's pretty strong but you do have that chance of kind of just taking them down or they have a chance of just getting away but if it's if we give them the choice for it then like i said there's gonna be a balance problem where strong prey will never be targeted because it's not worth the effort and why would they waste a bit of their cooldown on that and they can go after someone who just you know walked in and it's easy this is why i was thinking reward variable based on the strength of the prey also kind of thinking of it as if they're stronger they can provide more nutrient they'll have gathered more they'll have consumed more their body will have more in it in the story it's too complicated for us to do i yeah. entirely disagree just keep it simple and they just attack and they get someone and then we just put dueling in for if they want to target specific people for the uh for the break so how would we do displaying a hunt like why would you ever want to display your hunt on the screen if you have no idea who you're going to end up hunting well you'd be targeting someone for that you'd pay to target someone so you do have a ability to target a hunt not just a duel well yeah, a, a duel is a targeted hunt okay I was thinking of it as a an actual fight between two things rather than like it would be its own different thing it wouldn't have the mechanics of the hunt when you're calling it something different in my mind like it's a bit complicated for us to implement if we're going to have like four or five different combat like, yeah, that's why i was situation. kind of against the duel idea I, I liked it all just being hunting so we're just talking about a duel is literally just a hunt it's the same thing they have to be in the pvp area it all has to be like that but you can spend the bits in order to target a specific hunt so that it's displayed on the screen at which point you're allowing people to spend money to kill people or you can pay large amounts of talking points to have targeted hunts and it has to be agreed upon by both parties in both cases With That's going to be really hard to do, probably. What makes you think that that would be more difficult? I'm just thinking of the actual UI side of doing all the confirmation of both players before points are spent and exchanged. So one person says target player ID. The other player gets a whisper from the bot that says this other player wants to do a targeted hunt with you. Do you agree? And then you can say yes or no. And then at that point, the bot, you can then spend your bits on the bot and the bot goes, okay, now we're starting up this targeted hunt. And if you spend your bits with nobody in agreement to do a targeted hunt with you, we just take the bits because you're being a dumbass. I think at that point, if the person doesn't respond or say, or says no, then we just don't do a bit transaction. The bit transaction should be at the end of the process. Yes, I agree. It, but we have no way to inform how bits are spent in the channel. The only thing you can do when you're spending bits in a channel is to, without us building the whole Twitch extension first, is to enter a message with your bits. So you need to send your bits, have the message, the person, like the start targeted hunt message, 
the person you want to target. And if they're in your allowed list, then we start it and show it on the screen. If they're not in your allowed list, then your bits are just spent. It could work. It's That's the only way we can have it work with bits. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, the the whole verification side could could work. I guess. Do, what, well, people in chat, the, the few that are in chat, would you really, really want a verification before someone hunts you? Or if you're a bird, pret, bird animal and you're in the PvP zone and somebody decides to hunt you and put it on the screen, are you fine with just seeing someone hunt you and everybody watching the hunt happen? The reason I'm thinking verification is more for predator versus predator combat, which we still haven't really talked tackled. Yeah. Um, but I think the verification is important because I know some people won't want to be on screen. You could just not go to the PVP area if you don't want to be on screen. That's a that's a pretty big restriction then though. I love PVE, but all depends on how game starts. Ticket? Is it a toggle? So right now we're talking about having a PvP area where like basically you flag yourself for PvP. It represents you're in a richer, more fertile area where there's actual contestion over who gets control of that zone. So if you're a grazer and you're there, you're gonna get a lot more per tick because the much richer more nutrient food if you're a predator while there you're going to have a wide selection of prey to choose from and you will get more rewards for it yeah because they're more rich in reward so unfortunately guys i do have a hard out at six so yep. i've got to run no problem. um i love where this is going and i'm very excited to continue working on this in Rust during PvE with PvP bits, it says so on screen. If I don't want to be there, I just back off. Areas are usually around interesting places. That's basically exactly what we've talked about, but remember that we don't have a GUI. There's no graphical user interface. This is all done through the bot. So it's just a matter of saying I'm there or I'm not there, which is really a toggle on off. And at right. that, thank you very much for joining, Rage. I'm sorry we can't go longer. We have gone longer with these once in a while, but we will do this again next week. Uh, and Caria, we have all of these posted on our YouTube. If you want to see what has been talked about in the past, feel free to check them out. Otherwise, show up next week, and we'd love to get more of your ideas. This was a blast. We loved doing it with you. Glad you had fun. We got your creative juices flowing. This design document is also available through the link anytime you want to check it out. Until next time, thank you very much for joining Games by Design this Saturday. I'm Deus. I am Rage. And I'm Pseudo. May all of your shots be headshots.